One of the aspects of yield that many farmers are starting to focus on is improving pest weight in many different crops. All right, so what does this really amount to? What are you gonna have to do in order to improve your test weight? The first thing I'm always looking at is soil fertility. And it's not just throwing a bunch of nutrients out there. It's trying to get your soil overall in balance. For example, if you way overdo it with nitrogen and you don't have nearly enough potassium, that's probably not a good thing and most likely you're not going to have the test weight that you're looking for. So when I think test weight, the first nutrients I'm thinking about are P and K. Yes, everybody knows you got to put lots of nitrogen on certain crops, but how much phosphorus, how much potassium do you need, that's really a big key. Well, there are also a number of micronutrients that are important when it comes to test weight, so don't forget about the complete package. Uh, like Brian said, you want to hit those big ones, but also measure your soil for all the nutrients out there so you can keep up with micronutrients as well. Okay, in addition to that, it's when are these nutrients available? So let's say you have a light soil. Just putting them all on up front probably isn't going to do it. You got to think about, all right, when that crop is filling when the ear is filling, when the pods are filling, at that late season date, do I have ample nutrients getting into the crop? Now, you also may say, hey, I live in a dry area of the country, I'm non-irrigated, and I just need more rainfall so more nutrients get in. Look, if you're in that situation, we are, for example, what we find is we actually have to have higher levels of nutrients in the soil, we have to have a greater concentration because we have less moisture. So I want you to be thinking about that too, and that's one of the reasons we look at potassium, for example, not just parts per million, but what is the percentage in the soil? So if I'm going for big time yields, you know, maybe 4% base saturation K isn't enough. Maybe in a dry area of the country, when I'm going for super high yields, I gotta have 6% or 7% base saturation K. All I'm saying here is, somehow, some way, you've gotta get nutrients into that plant when that plant is filling its seed. Well, along those lines, we need to have good plant health all throughout the season. If we can keep our plant alive longer through the season, we'll extend our grain fill period. Another thing that can extend that period in corn, for example, we see some farmers planting different maturities out within the same field. Uh, on our farm, at the end of the year, a lot of times we'll end up with a little bit of this seed, a little bit of that seed, and it ends up getting mixed together in one field. And we see the pollination window and the, the grain fill window just extending in that field too. When you've got more time to fill the grain, you have more time to pack nutrients into the grain. So anything you can do to extend that window is important. Well, it can be. And you know, when you talk about the maturity of the crop, sure, that's possible, that could help. And obviously there is a genetic component to this. Certain genetics are going to give you more test weight and certain genetics a little bit less. But what I, what I really want to focus on is trying to keep that plant alive as long as possible. How do you do that? You've got to have great insect control, disease control, weed control, and then coming back to that fertility piece as well. If you do all those things, you might actually be harvesting a green crop or a green stalk and leaves, but the seed has dried down enough to harvest. One other thing that we really should mention, and it's not specifically linked to test weight, but we look at soil pH. And when we've got a soil pH that's out of the ideal range, what we find is that nutrient availability is poor. So I mentioned some micronutrients before, that micronutrients were important, and, and things like copper and boron and manganese, and there's a number of them, that availability improves as we get that pH back to that ideal range. The last thing I wanted to mention is soil organic matter. And just like Darren said on soil pH, you know, I've never really seen any studies that show me, oh, better organic matter levels for sure lead to better test weight. But I just want you to think about a couple of things uh, along those lines. What do we talk about all during this segment here? It's nutrient availability, especially as we go later in the season. Well, I think about organic matter in a couple ways in regards to that. Number one is mineralization. We know for a fact that if we have higher levels of organic matter, as the soil warms up, more of that organic matter breaks down and releases nutrients that include nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. So in other words, you're gonna have higher levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur naturally in your soil late in the season if you have good levels of organic matter. 
In addition to that, we know that if you have good levels of organic matter, you have more of a spongy type soil. You're going to have less compaction, you're going to have better soil porosity, and ultimately you should have more root growth because there's more air a little deeper into that soil. Well, if you have more root growth, again, you've got a more stable plant, a more healthy plant, a plant that should be able to support better yields and certainly higher test weights. I've talked about some of the factors that you should consider to try to improve test weight on your farm. As Brian mentioned, there are many good general farming practices that you need to do. You also just need to make sure you've got good nutrient availability and a long time for that plant to push that into the grain and into those kernels so you can build test weight on your farm. One other thing you want to control on your farm is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next. <music>